Good to see that we are live and we have people who have been waiting for us. Welcome everyone and um, to our uh, another uh, webinar from the series of subject webinars. Uh, I'm Georgi, as you might already know, and today I'm going to be the co-host slash co-moderator of today's webinar. As, as you usually know from these kind of webinars, I'm the least interesting person for you, just for today at least. And we have some guests uh, who will be from German universities who will be talking about uh, different programs. And yeah, I will introduce them to you. But before I do that, um, I will do a small presentation from my side, and then we will jump into uh, the most important part. Just some technical details. Uh, you can see the Q&A button in the bottom part of your Zoom interface. This is the place where you can send in your questions. Oh, oh okay. As soon as I said it, we already got one. I don't know. I will, I will check it later. And uh, we will get back to these questions uh, as soon as our presenters do their presentations. If there are any general, some general questions, I will address them immediately. But if, if you see that your question has not been addressed yet, it means that I have kept it for later because uh, after the webinar, after the presentations of our guests, we'll have a live Q&A session from maybe 10, 15 minutes. We'll see, depending on the number of questions. All right, uh, so let me now share with you my screen and um, we can start the webinar. So yeah, as you know, the topic is, today we are talking about economics. Uh, an umbrella topic is studying economics in Germany. And we have uh, guests from three German universities, but I think three programs. We have Professor Dr. Stefanie Engel from University of Osnabrück, who is joined uh, with her student. Um, then we also have Dr. Klaus Schmeller uh, from University of Halle-Wittenberg. Uh, so Professor Engel will be talking about Master of Science program in economics, and Dr. Schmeller will be talking about uh, Master's program in economics, data science, and policy. So this is agenda for today. And before we move to our special guest, let me tell you who is behind the webinar. So it is my German university. We are Germany's largest database of English taught study programs. When you go uh, to our webpage of mygermanuniversity.com, you will be able to find over 2,400 programs in English that are mostly taught in English. And the level is both bachelor and master's level. On the left-hand side, you can see a small excerpt of, of our study finder. And you can see that... Um, in addition to bachelor and master levels programs, we also have listed some short uh, courses and language courses as well, you can, which you can check out. Uh, to put it simply and shortly, our main mission is to help international students like you on their way towards studying in Germany. And our study finder is one of the ways of doing so. Uh, on our webpage, um, on mygermanuniverse.com, when you go to the on the left top left hand side, you can see the study finder button. When you click on it, you will be see that it has lots of filters and which means that uh, you can find your program much the best fitting program much faster and easier and more effectively. So uh, it has many filters, like for example, you can find a program according to uh, the score that you had in IELTS, right? So, or um, according to, of course, the cities, according to programs, et cetera, et cetera, lots of filters which will make your life much easier from my perspective. The second way of helping you is through writing articles. Uh, for right now, we, ha we have close to 100 articles, comprehensive articles. Uh, the topics vary. On the left-hand side, you can see a navigator. And uh, when you click on each of them, you will see uh, several art articles on each topics. For example, if you're interested in letter of motivation, or in visa topic, or uh, um, rankings, or uh, living in Germany. So all these topics, on all these topics, we have various uh, useful articles, which I will also suggest you to check out. And uh, regarding our team, uh, so uh, we are, um, so sorry, the third way of helping you also is through uh, webinars. So we have around 150 webinars per year. The formats can vary. It can be um, a webinar format. It can be just a meeting format. So you can find all these webinars slash meetings, which are already planned on our webpage in the section of webinars, and you can sign up for them for free. And I would also suggest you to uh, create um, a pay, uh, the account on our webpage. Again, also absolutely for free. Just by doing this, you have more options. You can unlock more options that our website is uh, able to offer you. And regarding the topics of webinars, of course, they're also quite various. It can be uniasis, it can be scholarships, can be visa or subject to webinars like the, like the one that, that we are having today. For example, it can be economics, it can be MBA, it can be physics, et cetera, et cetera. So you can already find uh, the planned ones for, for the upcoming months on our website. Uh, 
And uh, regarding our team, now uh, we are based in Hamburg in Germany, uh, but we are all over Germany and also in different uh, parts of the world. Um, and yeah, there we are quite international team. This is what I want to say. And we are, um, uh, we, we counsel in different languages. You can see some of them uh, on the bottom. And yeah, it, it ranges from English even to Georgian. So yeah, uh, what, what I want you to know from my side uh, is a database. Um, uh, our database, as I said, the study finder. So it is for those uh, basically who are interested in doing their studies in Germany in English. So uh, our database, uh, when you go to our database and try to search for programs in economics, you will be able to find 185 programs. Uh, you can see the balance between the bachelor and the master, more are master than bachelor. And uh, most of them are English only. And by English only, I mean that uh, you, you will not need any knowledge of German to uh, study on that program. Of course, knowing German in Germany is not a bad idea, but yeah, for these programs, you will not need any German. Uh, for those who are new buys and do not know what to expect when it comes to studying economics in Germany, I would also suggest you to check out our subject pages. By the way, I will uh, send the links to all these things that I'm talking about in the chat shortly. So on the subject pages, uh, which we have for each subject, you can find some general information regarding the rankings of universities that are offering these type of programs or tuition fee ranges that you should expect or requirements like application, admission or language requirements that you should expect when it comes to studying economics in Germany. So I think it's a nice step to have a, a bigger picture uh, before you uh, dig deeper a little bit into it. Um, yeah. Uh, of course, everyone wants to look for the right university profile and study program, but sometimes uh, the strategies are not as good as they should be. For example, sometimes students heavily rely on rankings or city names to find the programs fitting them. Yes, um, yeah, I mean, um, we hear, hear many times that, yeah, I want to study in Berlin because or I was to study in Munich because, yeah, this is the best city and they will have very nice education. Uh, I am not, I don't doubt. I mean, it is true. They have really nice universities with nice programs, but Germany is much more than Berlin or Munich. There are much more cities and towns in Germany which are offering you really high quality education. So you, you would like to overlook them actually, or with the rankings, yeah, in rankings, many universities are not actually accounted in those top rankings that you might be uh, aware of and and rankings do not always reflect exactly your interest. So that's why you should be a bit more attentive and go an extra mile to search the best fitting program for you. This is just an advice. Uh, and um, I would also like you to know about two types of universities when it comes to Germany. Uh, there's a uh, first is Universität type of university. And uh, on our study finder, you can also find programs in economics which are offered by this type of university exactly. And the second type is University of Applied Sciences in English. In German, you can see it can have different names, not the easiest one, but good for to train your German. Yeah, uh, it will be nice. Um, and yeah, in, in, on study finder also, you can uh, search for the programs which are offered in economics, which are offered by these types of universities. Uh, and uh, yeah, you might ask me now, what is the difference? Should I worry about this? Uh, I would put it in general, really in general terms. Um, when it comes to universite type university, the focus of usually is more on research and theory and uh, university of applied sciences you, uh, focus is usually more on application and practice. So this is just to put in general terms, but uh, if you are interested in more uh, differences between these two, please uh, drop me an email, which I'll provide you at, towards the end of our webinar. And yeah, last but not least, um, also uh, regarding how to search correctly, don't play a bit with the word, words together with the filters, because don't be too restrictive, otherwise you will uh, miss out some programs which might be actually uh, the best fit for you in terms of your interests and in terms of your background. With this said, um, I am now uh, moving to the interesting part of our presentation. I'm moving to Osnabrück University and you can see where it is. Um, I would put it, I would say it's in North Germany. So yeah, it will be fair enough. And we have uh, Professor Dr. Stefanie Engel, uh, who will be talking uh, together with her student about the uh, MSc program in economics. So I stop sharing my screen and the floor is yours. Thanks a lot, Georgie. Hello everyone. I'll just need a moment to share my screen. Okay, you should be able to see it now. Yes. I think, okay, great. Yeah, hello everyone. 
I'm very happy to present to you today the Master of Science in Economics at Osnabrück University. Uh, I'll be doing the presentation together with Gao De Long Ai, who is one of our students. Hello, uh, Long Os. Um, and our slogan for our master is future oriented and sustainable. And I think it will become clear why we use that slogan. And Long and I will together tell you about why the program, the people and the environment make Osnabrück a great place to do your master in economics. So let me start with the program. So overall in Osnabrück, we have 1,200 to 1,400 students studying business administration, economics and information systems at bachelor and master level. But today I will just talk about the master program in economics. And this is really a program where we just implemented brand new reforms starting this semester. The program will be in English. So don't be surprised if in the rankings or in some internet fora you don't see Osnabrück because it, the program was not in English in the past, but it now is. And we're ha very happy about that. And the second new thing is that we have a new, very timely specialization option in a very exciting area, sustainability, behavior, and environmental policy. And I'll tell you in a moment a bit more about this as well. And the third reform that we've implemented is that you will have even more flexibility in your course choices, which I think is also a good thing. What are the general aims of this program? Well, in the course of the program, you will deepen your knowledge in economics, of course, you will learn a broad spectrum of application-oriented economic methods and apply models and methods to economic policy issues and get prepared for working on important real-world projects. So although we are not an applied university, I would say we are a relatively applied program. You can, as I said already, um, shape the program quite a lot according to your own interests. And here you see an exemplary study plan of the Master in Economics. As usual, it has 120 ECTS. And really the only obligatory module, other than the master thesis, of course, is the model Advanced Methods of Business and Economics. It's a 10 ECTS module, compulsory providing advanced competencies in microeconomic analysis and in econometric analysis with application to concrete examples. And all the rest, the 90 ECTS left, are our elective area. So you can really make your own choices there. There are, of course, some constraints. 60 of these ECTS have to be in economics and methods, and 10 have to be in business administration. And Within this area, if you want to, you can choose one of two majors. So this is an option. You don't have to, but you have the choice between two exciting majors. The first is called empirical economics. The second is the one I already mentioned, sustainability, behavior, and environmental policy. I tell you in a moment a bit more about those two majors. In general, what it means to take a major is that you have to take at least 40 credits from a specified list of courses that fit that topic. So the major in empirical economics is motivated by the fact that modern economics increasingly uses empirical methods in its research. So our faculty is particularly strong in this regard. Actually, we do have an institute of empirical economics. A lot of colleagues work on empirical economics. And the aim of the major is to provide you with the ability to conduct yourself independent empirical analysis. The content is, um, on the one hand, you get a strong methodological foundation in statistics and econometrics if you choose this, ma this major, and you will get applied training in which various economic policy issues are addressed, and you also do an empirical study on your own in form of a project seminar. There are many career perspectives, of course, in that area of empirical economics. You could work at applied research institutes, at consulting firms, at departments of companies, banks, or the big four auditing firms conducting empirical analysis, or of course in academia. The second major, sustainability, behavior, and environmental policy is, as I said, very new. 
And it's really motivated by the observation that as humanity, we are facing important environmental challenges. I mean, you're all aware of the climate crisis. Young people care particularly about uh, that topic, but of course, also worldwide, we worry about that topic. And other environmental challenges include, for example, biodiversity loss. And all these challenges really call for a sustainability transformation. Something needs to change. And the thing is, we largely know how behavior of various actors needs to change. We know that what companies, consumers, farmers, governments should do. But why is this change not happening or not happening enough? Or as the article that I put here said, why is humanity so reluctant to save itself from climate change or other environmental challenges? That's motivating this major. And the thing is um, that understanding economics, you're interested in economics, that's why you're here today. But understanding economics is really important, both for understanding major sources of the problem and also for developing solutions to these challenges. So the aim of this major is really to qualify young professionals who understand the role of economics in sustainability transformation and who want to use this knowledge to actively shape a societal transformation towards a more sustainable economy. The content, you will, learn, you will get an in-depth understanding of the barriers and solution approaches for a sustainability transformation from an economic perspective. What's really unique about our program compared to um, some other programs in environmental economics is that we have this combination of environmental economics with behavioral economics. You probably know behavioral economics. It's also a very modern area of economics, more at the intersection to psychology and moving a bit away from standard assumptions of homo economicus, broader view on, on human behavior. So this program really combines those two aspects. And if you take this major, you will get additional methods, namely economic exper experiments as an important method in economics and also policy evaluation. And you will also get the opportunity to gain some fundamental knowledge in other sustainability related disciplines, for example, psychology, human geography or system science. Now, this is a very um, hot topic, so there are also many career perspectives in this area. You could work, for example, in public agencies shaping environmental policy at different levels or in companies or organizations involved in policy consulting or in sustainability departments of companies or environmental departments of economic research institutes. Of course, also in academia, research and teaching or also in environmental NGOs. So that's pretty much the content of the program. Let me briefly tell you also about admission requirements because I know that's also important to you. That's relatively low key in the Osnabrück University. You need, of course, a successfully completed bachelor's degree and you can check on Uni Assist for general acceptance of your degree in Germany. So this is just a general requirement for Germany, not specific to the university. Usually a three year bachelor program is sufficient Sometimes you need a bit more, but you can check that on only assist. You need English language skills, at least on level B2. And then there are some subject specific requirements. You will need at least 15 ECTS credits in mathematics, statistics or econometrics with at least eight of them in statistics or econometrics. And you will need at least 25 ECTS credits from the field of economics. So usually when you've undergone a bachelor in economics, you will easily satisfy these criteria. But also if you come from an interdisciplinary degree um, with economics in it, you're likely to um, be able to study in Osnabrück in this program. And if you do not fulfill these requirements, but are not missing more than 10 ECTS from that list, you can also still get admitted actually subject to the requirement to make up for certain modules. I put here also for you the application deadlines. They are for the winter semester, July 15, for the summer semester, January 15. If you have an international degree, including also from the EU, you have to apply via UniAssist. If you have a German bachelor's degree, probably not, you're not here today with a German bachelor's degree, but then you could uh, directly apply to Osnabrück University. 
And with that, I actually would like to hand over to Long, one of our master students, who will tell you about the people and the environment. All right. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> um, so again, first of all, I'm Gaudi Long Ai, and currently I'm at my last semester of studying um, master's in economics at the University of Osnabrück. And yeah, first of all, I can tell you guys um, to summarize a little bit that my personal experience at the uni university was very great because considering that I did my bachelor's at another university, I learned far more and more engaging personal at the University of Osnabrück. So yeah, it helped me a lot for my future, basically said. Um, so if you come to the University of Osnabrück, you will have very renowned uh, professors economics uh, professors, um, because they actively use new empirical methods. For example, Stephanie just told you about uh, the climate crisis and sustainability as a topic. Um, so yeah, you gain a lot of deeper insights as a student as well, um, because it's just very more engaging topics and a little bit more recent, um, which is a lot more fun, to be honest, considering that I did a lot of old uh, theories and stuff in my bachelor degree. Sorry for that. Now it goes on. That's perfect. perfect. <laughs> yeah, let's go. So also, um, yeah, like I said, uh, you get a lot more deeper insights as a student. And it's also very helpful that you have more easiness with your professors um, and direct contact um, because it's not a, a super large university. And because it's a little bit smaller, um, you get more direct contact with professors. For example, I did my master thesis uh, with Professor Engel. Stephanie and her uh, colleague, Dr. Otis Riamalu. And yeah, the experience was just great because it was very personal. I could ask them questions if I had any. And yeah, it was just a lot of fun doing it. And also considering the students, um, they are very engaged in the university. For example, there's a student council that uh, is in contact with the professors and the university management. And also the social media accounts uh, are run by students. Um, so they always give updates for recent news or anything that's changing. And also uh, there are interdisciplinary networks. Um, so research lines like digitalization um, that give a deeper insight for studies and um, topics that are addressed at the university, which could be also basically considered uh, being con uh, connected to having renowned research. So yeah, let me tell you about, uh, about the environment a little bit. Um, so Osnabrück is uh, called the city of peace because the major peace treaty was signed uh, here in uh, 1648. And it's a very, it's a very pretty uh, city. It's very historic. Like on the pictures, you can tell there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of architect architecture that's um, yeah, historic and very beautiful. Now, also, uh, the city is called a small, big city. There are, uh, the population is 168,000 people in total, and 28,000 people are students, um, which makes it a student city. Uh, so you've got both a little bit like a big city, but it's a little bit clustered with students. So you are always engaged with other people and uh, a little bit more modern life. And so basically, nine out of 10 students are living in the city which makes loneliness not possible because it's clustered and you have pretty much everything surrounded. Um, so for example, you have a lot of opportunities to, besides studying, also have a very nice life. For example, a lot of green fields, like parks and areas that you can relax in the summer, for example, um, a lot of sport and cultural activities, um, always events uh, surrounding the city and also music scene is very big. Um, so, yeah, basically, it's a little bit clustered. You have uh, the bars and clubs and eating areas all surrounded in the city, uh, city, 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 city. And the people, um, yeah, always uh, around the city. And it's very lively. And also, Osnabrück is uh, considered the top five city for affordable cost of living. So, yeah, you have a benefit of not having to pay too much all the time. And also... It's very well connected uh, from the ICE train. I don't know if you uh, already know a little bit about the cities, the biggest cities in Germany, for example, Berlin or Düsseldorf, but using the train, you can get there uh, under two hours, which is very fast. So 
Yeah, it's very well connected. So all in all, to be said, uh, my personal experience in Osnabrück was very great. And I can just tell you guys, it's, yeah, it's nice. Thanks a lot, lot Long. Um, yeah, before we close, I just put here also a bit more general information for you that you can look at yourself later. I think you will have access to the slides if I'm well informed. And I put here on this slide some information on finding accommodation because I know that's always important when you come to a new city, a new uh, place, or even a new country. Um, so, of course, we have residence halls with different types of um, housing from single rooms to shared apartments to family apartments. I put the link here. A good short-term solution is usually to go for some shared living, also sharing a flat with others. There's also a very good um, link here where you can find housing for that. And I put here also the most important links for the housing market. And also here on the next slide, you find some more links to information on, um, on the accommodation in general, but also on furniture, for example, how you can find furniture, uh, inexpensive furniture for your new apartment, on other practical issues of life in the city, including the cost of living. You can check for this link here. And also I put the information on where you find more on the master program in economics or on general study organization and courses offered at Osnabrück University. And if you have any further questions now, um, after the presentations of the others, there will be room for it. If later you come, uh, you have more questions, you can also contact our degree program supervisor, Lena Romanenschuk. She couldn't be here today, but she'll be very happy to um, answer also your questions. I put the two email addresses that you can use for that also on this last slide. And I look forward to the question answers later on, but I hand over for Georgie now for the moment. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you very much, Gal. Um, I just put uh, also these uh, emails in the chat and regarding the, uh, the presentations, yes, uh, they will be available to all those students registered as soon as uh, our guests will provide us with their presentations, we will uh, get it to you, dear attendees. And yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Thanks a lot also for the student's perspective, which is always a valuable add-on to the presentations. And let me with this move to our next guest, um, to Dr. Klaus Schmeller uh, from, uh, as I said, uh, Martin Luther University Halle-Wittenberg. You can see where it is located. We moved a bit to the, to the center, more to the center east of Germany compared to Osnabrück. And we will talk about uh, a, a master's, again, master's level program, but now in economics, data science and policy. So I stop sharing my screen and Dr. Schmela, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'll share my screen and then we're good to go. Okay. Are you able to see my presentation now? Yes. Excellent. So uh, once again, uh, welcome on my behalf as well. It's a pleasure to be here to, uh, this afternoon and to present our program to you. Um, just a few words about myself. I'm the program coordinator of this program, of our specific master's program in economics, data science and policy. I'm also a lecturer at our school uh, with a specific focus on, on data analytics. And here's my contact information um, for any future reference, any questions that you may have. I'll take it the other way around, actually, and George already beat me to it. Um, I'll start with where we're located and then make my way down to the program. So uh, Halle you know, MLU is located in Halle, uh, in the center of Germany, um, very central, just an hour south of Berlin, uh, a couple of minutes away from Leipzig, which is the next bigger city with about 600,000 uh, people living there. Uh, and Halle is located in a very thriving uh, region of Germany. We have a very strong industrial region, a long re re back region, uh, chemical industry. It's a very large logistics hub. We have car manufacturing located here these days, IT technology. Um, in the middle of all that, you find Halle. Uh, a city of a similar size of what we've seen before, Osnabrück, about 200,000 people, a bit larger, um, 20,000 students that study in Halle. So it's it's very explicitly a student city also. 10% of the people live there are students, essentially. Um, it's a very, very old historic town, 1,200 years old with lots of churches, theaters, opera house, etc., parks, and the Saale River, lots of pubs and clubs. So it's a very attractive um, a student city. 
The university itself uh, has about 20,000 students and they're spread over different faculties and different schools. Um, we cover everything from the social sciences to the natural sciences, um, humanities, uh, you pretty much name it. Um, along with that go our facilities that support all of our students, regardless of the school that they're studying at. at. So we have a language center where you'd be able to uh, study any language of your choice, essentially. We have university sports center, a career center that supports you, lots of other institutions, uh, choirs, orchestras, uh, you name it. Um, that will keep you busy uh, aside from your curriculum. Uh, and there's also very strong dormitory infrastructure in that we have lots of dormitories available um, as part of the university. But Hull is also very affordable in general. So it's also uh, very easy to find accommodation outside of the dormitories if you choose so. So making my way to our school of economics and business, we are the largest uh, school uh, actually at the, um, at the university. We have about 2000 students and about 25 chairs, um, which are chairs are professors, um, plus usually two or three, four um, assistants that work with them. Um, so we're a fairly large um, uh, school uh, with a particular focus on economics. That's where we have most of our professors, but we also do teach um, business studies and uh, of course, information management. We are very closely linked, uh, which might be interesting, especially for those of you who want to study economics to the IWH, which is a, one of the renowned economic research institutes in Germany. There are only a few of them, and one of them is just around the corner. Uh, we have lots of joint staff with them. We do, uh, they do teaching here. We cooperate on many occasions. Um, so that is something that ties us very closely to, um, to the economic research institute. In terms of study programs, I'm going to talk about our Masters of Science in Economics, Data Science and Policy today. We have two more uh, English-speaking international bachelor programs and one more master's program, um, which um, is somewhat related to the economics, data science and policy in that they will be in your classes. You will meet them there, but that's a program that requires you to speak Italian uh, aside from, from English. So that's a very specific uh, target audience. But if you're interested in that, um, that might also be something uh, to look at. So with a focus on um, the Masters of Science and Economics, let me get right to it. It's a program that's been around for a long time. It's been accredited um, for a long time. It's, as we've seen before, it's a two-year program with one, 120 uh, credit points. Uh, English as the language of instruction. You don't need to bring any German at all. There are no classes taught in German in this program. However, if you want to, you're of course more than welcome um, to learn German on the side. And Georgie told you earlier, it's probably a good idea. You need to spend some of your time learning German as you're here. Um, and that's absolutely, that's available to anyone who's interested, but it's not part of the curriculum and it's not required. The program is fairly small um, as our, as our master's programs typically are. We admit 25 students per year to this program, so you can enjoy very small class sizes or comparatively small class sizes, a very multicultural community. Our students pretty much arrive from everywhere around the world. Um, and you can join that program in October. We only enroll in the winter semester, so if you want to join us, um, classes would start in October. How's the program set up? Uh, well, there's a, a simplified program structure for you. Um, essentially, it's what you know, what the name tells you already. So what you will do at the beginning of your studies in the first two semesters is take some, some mandatory modules, um, advanced microeconomics, macroeconomics, monetary economics. Um, and then you start to focus on the two pillars of this program. The first one being economic data science. Essentially, all our professors, all our economists work empirically these days. Um, so they're all engaged in, 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 in data science methods. And here we have a specific focus on, uh, on methodology that, um, that the first pillar represents. And then the second uh, pillar is sort of the applied part of the methodology um, that focuses on specifically more on economic policy advice. Uh, what might such classes be in terms of economic data science? I've got you know, some more details on the next slide, but so you, so you get some idea. In economic data science, you would typically look at um, econometric model uh, methods, things such as causal inference. Um, also some more machine learning oriented classes are available in conjunction with our um, computer science department, for example. So that's all um, within the realm of, of possibilities there. Whereas the economic policy classes focus on very specific fields. And there you have lots to choose from. 
you name it, health economics. It could be something like growth and development that you might be interested in. We have um, uh, evidence-based economic policy advice, which is, for example, um, a module in conjunction with our Economic Research Institute. So a lot of things for you to choose from. Um, and then finally, there's a small block of electives where you can select from a, a bit of a wider range of things that you might be interested in that you weren't able to cover um, within these two pillars. So that's pretty much um, the simplified structure of the program. For those of you, I'm not going to um, spend too much time on this. This is the more detailed structure, which is, which is essentially what I just said, and you will obtain the slides. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, um, but this is what I said initially. So you take some advanced economics classes when you start, then you have some economic data science classes, and there's just some examples here of what you might be taking. Then we have economic policy classes that range from, as I've said, growth and development to health economics, to ethics and economics. Uh, more historical perspectives, so a lot of things um, um, you might be um, interested in that you're actually able to focus on uh, within these two pillars. And that is the, um, the program structure in a nutshell. What do our graduates actually do? Well, there's very high employability. Um, of course, that's based A on the, uh, the economics um, classes that they're taking, so which makes our um, graduates very attractive for employers. But of course, it's also based specifically on the um, strong focus on methodology, which allows our employees to essentially um, not just enter the field of economics afterwards if they choose to do so, but also to still take a turn to the business uh, direction if they want to. We place our um, graduates with large enterprises, international enterprises, or small and medium-sized enterprises. Consulting firms are pretty popular. There are government, uh, with the government, the public agencies, of course. Then there are the research institutes, uh, which also um, gobble up a considerable part of our graduates. Um, and finally, um, it may be an option for you to actually join a PhD program. There's a regional PhD program um, that the University of Halle is part of, which is a possibility, um, or you may join any other PhD program of your choice. Just a few final remarks on um, the organizational issues. So as you know, um, we are a public university um, which, which entails no tuition fees to you, which we charge a small administrative fee per semester, which also includes your, your public transport in the entire region. And on top of that, there will be monthly expenses. And I've said it earlier, Hull is, is very, very affordable by German standards. Um, we usually are looking at about 800 euros per month, but that includes essentially everything. That is your rent, your food, your transportation, and your mandatory health insurance. Um, that is what you're looking at at current prices. Um, if you do need financial support, there is, well, since it's a public university, we don't have any tuition fees in Germany. There's in general limited financial support, but what we do offer are small scholarships for excellent students. Um, and what's also readily available are uh, jobs as research assistants with the university, with the research institutes nearby, um, also outside the MLU. And maybe I should mention that there are more research institutes than just the economic one. There are others. We have the, uh, the Environmental um, Economics Research Center in Leipzig, which is just half an hour away. Um, they're also always looking for interested students. And we have Max Planck and Harlow. So a lot of renowned other um, research institutes that you might be able to connect with, um, both in terms of a job uh, to financially support yourself and also to write your thesis, to connect with the researchers there and to engage in a bit more interdisciplinary um, research if you choose to do so. Um, finally, my last slide, I promise, um, just on the admission requirements, what we require from you is a good GPA on a German scale, which is a 2.5 on our scale. Um, we require some proof of proficiency in English. So that could be an IELTS, it could be um, Cambridge, it could be TOEFL, the typical um, uh, test scores. Uh, depending on where you completed your bachelor's, we might also recognize um, a bachelor's completed in English as a proof of proficiency. Um, but there we'd have to look at the details. And the third requirement that we have is that we require at least 60 credits from you in some sort of economics business related courses. And we also count all the applied courses there, econometrics, methodological courses. Um, but you cannot have a purely different background in say humanities without any economics or business classes whatsoever. Um, that would actually render you ineligible for the program. Uh, we require at least 60 credits.
As for the application period, um, final remarks. Application usually opens the beginning of April and we run until mid-July, just as the University of Osnabrück um, does um, with regards to admi the admission for the winter semester starting in October. Uh, and all the applications are processed by UniAssist as well. So if you want to apply to the program and check out our website, um, the applications are then run by UniAssist. I thank you very much for your attention. Um, and I'm open to any questions you might have afterwards in the FAQ. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Schmeller, uh, for a ni very nice presentation. And I would say um, we can already jump into our Q&A session. So a bit earlier than was planned, but it's fine. We have more time, it means. Uh, and you mentioned uh, uh, issue regarding the GPA, the good GPA, uh, how it is, it is in German. So just uh, to make things clear for the students, yeah, in Germany, it's a bit different system. 1.0 is the highest GPA. So don't be confused if you see something, something like this. And I put in the chat also the link to Uh, transform your GPA to a German system and see approximately where you stand when it comes to Germany. All right. So uh, thank you very much. And let's now try to address the questions. Uh, let's try uh, with the ones that are open right now. So a uh, question from Amit uh, to Professor Engel. Uh, dear Professor Engel, um, I hope you are well and safe. Many thanks for your kind reply. It's nice to know about you your group of student assistants it's very inspiring okay so it means that it was a reply uh, just to reply sorry it means that you had a conversation i missed that <laughs> i i, I um, applied I, I tried to reply to the questions i saw already to the degree yeah, that i right. thought they were to me <laughs> okay great thank you very much for that <laughs> the, then next question uh this question is uh, for uh, dr schmella uh, if i do an internship with halle uh, will it account to ects um, so an internship is not part of the curriculum, um, mm -hmm. so that will not be counted towards your degree. Okay. Thank you. It was clear and concise. <laughs> Next question. Um, this is, I think, to more to maybe uh, Dr. Schmeller, but also maybe to uh, uh, Professor Engel. How to apply for a scholarship? I think that you mentioned some small scholarships, uh, and uh, Dr. Professor Engel, maybe you would also like to add anything on this. Yes, please. Sure, I'll be happy to say just a few words about it. So um, as I've mentioned earlier, we don't have any tuition fees in Germany, which is why we don't have such an extensive scholarship system in general. There are some small scholarships available, uh, which you can even uh, apply for in your first semester, such as what's called Deutschland Stipendium, which is called, you know, German scholarship, so to speak, where essentially um, supporters support specific students that apply for these scholarships. I think they're in the range of, I don't want to say anything wrong, by 300 to 400 euros per month, around about that. Um, and such scholarships are available in general, and they are we, we actually have a lot of donors at the School of Economics, you know, <laughs> so if you're studying it at this faculty, um, chances are that you might actually get one of those. Um, and in terms of the, the next question, which kind of, you know, ties into that, the same question, uh, scholarships and research assistantships. So um, there are a lot of jobs as research assistants, at least here, um, because our chairs usually are looking for especially master students um, to support them with their, with their economic research. That's one thing. And the other part is that we have, as I've mentioned earlier, um, at least two, li two large uh, Leibniz uh, research institutes and one Max Planck Institute that are also looking for, uh, for economic students um, as research assistants. And we all pay reasonably well. We all have a lot of assistants and students that have been working for us very successfully and supporting their um, their studies. It's not something to bank on when you arrive to Germany, I would say. I mean, you should be able to, to meet that cost of living, which I've outlined earlier, um, but it can be a really nice bonus and at best, you know, almost completely finance you. You just, I wouldn't suggest relying on it before arriving. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. Maybe a, maybe a difference to some US programs where you kind of, you, you might get these assistantships beforehand. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that's true. In Germany, we usually don't have that, but you, you come and then you apply for the positions and there are usually a lot of these positions. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, otherwise for Osnabrück, it's the same as Dr. Schmerler was saying. Great. Yeah, just from my perspective also, I also had uh, back in the time lots of, I won lots of these assistantships I applied and I um, I was accepted for a lot. I was not like relying 
totally on this, of course, but it is also a very nice thing uh, to have an experience plus also some small financial income. It's a really great combination. Regarding scholarships, uh, I just also put a general scholarships which you can apply for. And Dr. Schmeller also mentioned some Deutschland Stipendium correctly. And also there are some more uh, high level uh, also like DAD, which is one of the first tops for students. And uh, I'm also international student from non-EU country, and I also won a scholarship, uh, this DAD scholarship, so it's also available for most of you. I suppose most of you are from non-EU countries. Um, and yeah, so check out the article for more information. And thank you, uh, dear guests, for your answers. Let's move forward. A number is rising of question, I'm afraid. <laughs> I will not have enough time, but yeah, I'll try my best. A uh, question from Ahmad. Uh, I think it's uh, to both of you. I got my uh, bachelor of science degree in 2012, 10 years ago, and a diploma in international economics in 2017. It was for two years. Can I apply? Um, so yeah, Ahmad, uh, just to jump in quickly, only based on this, it's sometimes a bit difficult to say whether you are eligible only because this is just one piece of information from the whole puzzle of the requirements, just so that you know, and now I'll hand it over to our guests so that we can add even more to that. Yeah, I would also say um, it, it's best to check on Uni Assist. You can use Uni Assist to check whether your degree qualifies. Mm -hmm. I don't think in general, because it's been a little bit of time ago, it's it's a hurdle, but it's more what you have actually covered in the degree. Um, yeah. But if you have a BSc and also the diploma for two years, I would think that it's enough. But to be really on the safe side, you better check it on Uni Assist. Great. And Dr. Schmel, would you like to add on something or? No, there's no. not much to add. I'm not sure if that aims at being eligible to study in Germany or whether or not it makes sense to, to, to join the program because the diploma might be something similar to a master's. Um, mm -hmm. I think then it depends on, you know, on the specific program that you're joining and if you feel that it could still contributes anything to your education. Um, but that would require a look at the diploma that you've taken before. Cool. All right. Uh, great. Thank you. Uh, next question. Can work experience help my application? I ask because my GPA is not that bright. Uh, yeah. I'll be, happy to say, I'll be happy to say something about that. I think that's probably very university specific because we all have, you know, different admission requirements and regulations. Um, uh, what I can say is, yes, it does. So we consider work experience as part of your, your of the admission ranking. Um, that being said, you still need to meet the two point the good the good GPA in your bachelor's. That's still the minimum. So, but as long as you pass that, then we take a lot of different criteria into account to improve your your chances of admission. And the work experience is one of them. Okay. I can say maybe for Osnabrück, we, we don't have a GPA uh, that you require to join. So you can definitely join. You can definitely apply. Perfect. Thanks a lot for your answers. Next, uh, move to the next question. Um, so also in the case of exchange semester, how is it organized by me alone? And also, does it mean that I will have one more semester in Germany? Yes, anyone would like to address? Sure, I'll be happy to. Um, so for the exchange semester, um, I think I, I can, in this case, I can probably see, speak for the University of Osnabrück as well. And um, we're all obliged to organize our study programs in a way that we enable exchange semesters, right? So in technically, you can always go abroad for a semester throughout your master studies and somehow incorporate that into your into your studies at the at the at the German university. Now, if you choose to go abroad and um, take classes that are completely unrelated to your degree here, and we cannot use them, then that would extend your studies. But what we usually do is we get together with all of our students who do that, and there are quite a lot of them, um, and we discuss their plans and see what they can take abroad and what they can bring back to our curriculum, and that will then not prolong your studies. There's, there's no need to prolong your studies unless you want to. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that was the answer for all. Then is a question, is a placement test for free? I think it was for uh, Dr. Schmeller, addressed to Dr. Schmeller, yeah. 
yeah, I think you probably took a look at our website. Um, so what we have is, I said earlier that we need some sort of English test score, TOEFL, et cetera, or you've studied your bachelor's in English. And um, what's also listed there is a placement test. So what we what we offer for free and online at the moment is for those um, really late uh, comers in terms of applicants who can't produce this test anymore because it takes two months or so to get the result, um, to do an online placement test with us for free. And that's that offer actually stands. So that is an alternative to a, to a TOEFL or um, an IELTS test score. Great. Thank you. And now question for Professor Engel. Also, you addressed it. I, I think it's important question so that everyone can hear it. Also, those who have just joined. Um, is it possible to have one thesis supervisor from outside of Osnabrück? Yeah, I wrote it already in the, in the answers. Um, so the usual thing is that you have one thesis supervisor in your master's and, and that person is from Osnabrück. So the main supervisor has to be from Osnabrück. But we sometimes collaborate on projects where you also then have sort of an informal co-supervisor from somewhere else. That's in general possible. Um, mm -hmm. It's not the so, so usual thing, but we've done that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good to know still. Thank you very much. Uh, next question is... Um, from Ike Mefula, uh, are families allowed with students? Can you work as a student and how about post-graduation work permit? Let me take over this question because it's not a program uh, specific and I know answers to this question very well. Yes, families are allowed with students, uh, but of course you have to meet some of the goals, some bureaucratic steps uh, as always. You can work as a student, of course, uh, also uh, our guests mentioned that you can work as student assistant or do some part-time job. With your student visa, you are allowed to work a part-time or 20 hours for 240 days or full-time for 120 days per year. So you can do it. And for post-graduation work permit, after you graduate, you have an opportunity to apply for a work seeker visa with which you can have a right to find a job for 18 months. And then, of course, if you find job according at least close to your degree profession, then you can also get a work permit. This is the some general answer uh, to your question. Um, okay, next question from Isa. Hello, if I know German, would that increase my chance to get a place at the university? Thank you. Yeah, I doubt so, but yeah, let me give floor. Uh, let's start with Professor Engel. No, in, in our case, it's really those um, requirements that I put on the slide. And mm -hmm. yeah, whether you know German or not wouldn't affect your chances, but your chances in general are good because um, this is a new program now in English. And so we, do, we, are, we don't have as strict requirements as some of the other universities. Mm -hmm. Good to know. Thank you. Um, my, our answer is pretty similar. Um, we don't um, need any German and we don't um, give any bonus points for any previous knowledge of German. Um, it was one thing I should probably add, which I mentioned, forgot to mention earlier. And we have a quota. We have a quota for people who are from Germany and the EU and from outside the EU. Um, so we have a, you know, a certain uh, uh, budget for students um, who are not, not non-EU applicants, uh, which makes, you know, renders your chance pretty good as well. Okay, yeah, that's important information. Thank you very much. And yeah, in general, if your if your uh, chances are not higher with your German to get into program, they are much higher for other things. So always knowing German, you are on the safe side. Uh, just from my experience. Uh, question from Aditya: uh, Can I join directly after three years bachelor degree economics with two C with C two? Sorry, with C two as my English language. Do I have to take? English test. Yeah, you touched upon uh, regarding English a lot, uh, English issue a lot, but yeah. Uh, anyone would like to address this question? I have to admit that I'm not sure anymore about these tests. Is C2 more than B1? Probably yes. No? Yeah, sure. So, it's so highest for question. Osnabrück, you just need B1, so you will be fine with the English test. And yeah. uh, three years bachelor degree economics usually should also be fine, but to be double, to be really sure, you better check on uni assist because yeah, sometimes because the German program is uh, the German high school degree is longer than most international high school degrees. Sometimes mm -hmm. you need a bit more, but it depends on where you come from and your high school degrees. I think so. That's really something that's not specific to our university. So mm -hmm. you better check on uni assist just to be double sure. Maybe Georgie knows more about that, but <laughs> yeah, I can add after after Dr. Schmeller, maybe. 
Um, I think the crux of the question is probably the C2 English. Do I have to take an English test? Well, if you know you have C2 English, then you know you must have something that documents it. Uh, and that's your, that's, I think that's the question that you're having. Um, so you need to back up that claim by, you know, by some sort of usually test score in one way or another, or where you've completed your bachelor's degree in English or whatever it may be. Um, so that's, that's, I think, that's what I believe you mean with the, by the question. Um, yeah, we need, we need something from you that documents that that's recognized, such as a TOEFL Cambridge, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. And just uh, to address this issue regarding uh, is it enough with three years bachelor, usually in Germany, what is important to get into master's program? Yeah, uh, it's how much ECTS points do you have? For example, if with your three years bachelor, you calculate it like 180, 210. Uh, so then you are more or less on the safe side usually, right? So this is what matters actually. So I would, in addition to Uniassist check, which was uh, offered by uh, Professor Engel, I will also uh, ask you to check Anabin as well, whether your uh, program or university, your program is accredited in Germany and it's H+. As long as it's H+, on Anabin, you are fine. If it's H+, H-, minus, you need an additional check also to make sure you are fine. But yeah. Uh, this is my suggestion on this regard. And regarding English, of course, yeah, you have to have something. Uh, as long as you are not native speaker, you are not from US or UK, uh, it's just saying C2, uh, unfortunately, is not enough. Uh, you have need, you need some documentation. Uh, question from Golam, but is it but is it possible to apply directly to university as non-EU student? I'm living in Germany right now. So I think this Golam question was first addressed to Professor Engel. He asked regarding UniAssist issue. And just to add uh, on this, you can apply directly to the university, uh, to the program, which gives you this opportunity. Some programs uh, uh, process the applications from international students from uh, via UniAssist, but there are some programs who do it directly. So it totally depends on the program. Uh, so there's two ways to do this. When you check on the program, for example, Professor Engel several times mentioned that they use UniAssist to process. So if you are from non-EU, there is no way to avoid this. Uh, just to, to put it uh, in a simple, uh, simple words. Uh, Osnabrück, next, maybe I can say in Osnabrück, it's, uh, yeah. it depends on where your bachelor degree is from. So not yeah. where you live right now, but where your bachelor degree is from. So if your bachelor degree is not from Germany, you would have to apply via UniAssist. If your bachelor yeah. degree is from Germany, you could apply directly. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you for this addition. Um, now this question, I suppose, is to for uh, Dr. Schmeller. In, is competition very high because you have restricted admission and really want to get in? And I really want to get into the program. Um, it, there, there is competition there, absolutely. But um, well, that's why we have we have sort of two quotas where we um, we have one group of uh, EU, uh, German citizens and European citizens who apply for the program, and then we have the non-EU citizens um, who who have a different quota, which is 50-50 uh, in total. So uh, within each quota, I would say chances are pretty good. Also, I I must reasonably say that typically you probably don't just apply for one master's program in economics, right? You typically apply for a lot of programs. Um, so what universities do is they don't just admit one per slot, but let's say two per slots, just because, you know, if anyway, everyone applies to, for two programs, uh, we can only accept one. So on average, one out of two drop out of every program, um, which means the chance of really getting into the one that you want to get into are pretty high because most of these programs, they overbook uh, the actual number of slots that they have. Right. So if we have 25 slots, we might hand out 50. Um, so if you really want to go to the program, um, your chances are that, um, that you get an invitation. Great. Thanks a lot. Uh, next question that I will quickly answer. So my German GPA is 3.2 after using the conversion link shared in this webinar. Am I eligible? So for Osnabrück, as you could see, there's no specific GPA requirement. So as long as GPA is concerned, you are fine. And uh, with MLU also, it was 2.5. Uh, German, but uh, with 3.2, uh, yeah, a German GPA, uh, you will not be, um, you will not go through uh, this threshold. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, 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 I, I'm, I'm being really careful with these conversions. I'm not sure where you, where you did it on, on, if you did that on UniAssist, but usually they have some, you, you know, some local expert at UniAssist that takes your degree and your specific classes and your high school degree and everything, and they kind of all jumble it together and they they convert the grade. I, I personally can't impossibly predict what comes out of it. Sometimes it comes out much better um, than, you know, what you would expect elsewhere. Um, so, 
at best, I would say, take your chances. If you know yeah. you've come super far away from 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 something that's good, even in your in your home country, then maybe it's not worth your while. But in general, I would say give it a shot. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Thank you very much. So uh, next question is for both programs. Does MLU and Osnabrück offer hostel facilities for international students? Maybe dormitory slash hostel, which this is what they meant. Maybe dormitory more. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Yes. Professor Engel, please. Yeah, I can say that um, we don't have like specific dormitories or hostels for international students, but we do have these um, residence halls. I call them on my slide. No, these these are the dormitories, or, mm -hmm. or I guess you could call them hostels in that sense. Um, yeah. And and there are apartments there, and and you have the link there, so you could apply. It's important to apply early on. Uh, because mm -hmm. these seats are in high demand. But in general, I would say as it's an advantage of Osnabrück that the housing situation is better than in some of the large famous cities, uh, for sure. Um, yeah. But still, for the dormitory uh, spaces, it's better to apply to those early. That's why I put the link there also. Um, yeah. They will have the, Georgie, will the participants have access to those slides so they can see the... The link i can also put it in the chat again if you yes may. yes sure as, as as soon as you send us the uh, your uh, presentation right. they they yeah. will be redirected yeah, and okay. they will get mm -hmm. yeah yes okay. and uh for mlu not much to add. Same thing here. We have dormitories. We have a hostel for people who bring their spouses or anything for some short period of time but generally it's dormitories um there are lots available apply early not much to say yeah. Yeah, yeah, true. Uh, they, our guests put it a bit softly. They said that demand is high. I would say there's a hunt <laughs> going for the dormitories <laughs> to put it uh, correctly, <laughs> more correctly, because I had to apply, for example, three to four months earlier, but to get my dormitory. But also it depends on the cities, uh, to be honest, in towns and cities where how is situation. But it's always good to apply earlier because they are usually also uh, cheaper than the market prices and you'll have uh, more money for some other things. So, uh, maybe, yes. So, George, just maybe to give our audience a bit of a taste of, you know, what it's like to study in Germany. A lot of German students and international students after a couple of semesters, they move to shared accommodations, uh, which is a great yeah. way to hook mm -hmm. up with other students. And there's a lot of that available. So we have lots of these bulletin boards where once you are here, maybe you want to move into the dormitory at first and then you get to know people and they share apartments. Um, and then you move to some shared accommodation, which is great to get to know other students, students from other schools schools and that's really um i would say um you know allows you to acquire the taste of studying in germany doing that so mm -hmm. that's also a great alternative um to to dormitories yeah yeah, that's that's true. yeah that's why i also put it also on on the slide this option of these uh, shared flats and often that is really the the most realistic short run option also when you come and you haven't applied early enough for the dormitory you usually do find a space in those kind of shared flats. And there is this link also on my one slide for this. And that's mm -hmm. like, I would totally agree with Dr. Smerle. It's a great way to live in Germany, yeah. no? and to, to get to know then also some Germans maybe in your in your shared flat and also people from other areas. Um, a lot of a lot of students do that. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's completely true. Yeah, that, that's true. Thank you very much. Uh, there's a question from Nisi, but actually we already addressed this question because it is was uh, for uh, Dr. Schmel regarding scholarships and research assistantships and how they will they have to cover the living expenses. But we uh, we uh, very well addressed this question already. That's why I can say that you know, the answer. Uh, another question also from Sierra Leone, from Salu. Uh, what English grade do I need to apply for economics? Yeah, English uh, English issue is always uh, uh, something important. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, it, it was already said several times, but just to say once again, uh, what English requirement is not a, the, not a test exact, but just a level. Is it B1, B2, C1 or C2? Uh, yeah. Anyone would like to say? Sure, it's B2. It's B2 for, for, for MLU. Yeah. And B1. And I think B1 for Osnabrück. Yeah. Mm -hmm. B2 and B1. So, Salu, it's B1 and B2. But always, yeah, it's always safe to. Higher you have, also, better it is. 
I have to correct myself. I was just checking again. It's B2 also for Osnabrück. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. B2. I said it wrongly before. So, yeah. So, just once again to repeat, it's B2 for both programs. As long as your English level is B2, you are fine. But, of course, you have to prove it. Just saying that you have B2 or C2 uh, is not enough. Uh, question from Dennis. Uh, are there any additional tests from universities to take in order to apply or just common requirements? Only those that we stated Already, Only no? the requirements, no additional it's tests. Really from the English test and and the uni assist. Uh -huh. Yeah, telling that that you have the right, um, do you have a bachelor's degree that is accepted? That's all. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, just the admission requirements. We don't have any extra tests, any placement tests or anything. None of that. Great. I just also uh, put in the chat the link to. Um, UniAssist, what is UniAssist, so that no one is confused when we talk about UniAssist. Just to put it simply, it's just, a, as, I, as I mentioned, it's just a service. Uh, it's like a bridge between some programs and you, which check uh, whether your pro your documents are fine and all right. And then if all is fine, they uh, they uh, send your package to the program and they, they decide whether you accept it or not. And the, this is some information about it. Uh, next question from Fahd. Uh, I'm from Ghana and my primary language is English. I studied with English throughout primary to senior high school. Would I still need to write TOEFL or any exams to prove my English efficiency when applying to business in your noble institution? For business, uh, for bachelor's level, level. So I think this is for uh, Dr. Schmeller, because you mentioned some bachelor programs also you have in English. So maybe you could address this question. Sure. Um, but I think it probably goes for the master's programs in general too, because we get a lot of these inquiries specifically from yeah. Ghana. So I do <laughs> uh, understand that question very well. Um, yes, unfortunately, we still require um, a TOEFL score, uh, at least for MLU that goes, um, a TOEFL score um, or some IELTS score, whatever it is, from you. The reason is very simple. And a lot of, you know, that's an important question for a lot of countries. A lot of countries have English as their official language, but not everywhere. And we can't tell which specific school you, uh, you attended. And and how good your command of English really is. Some some applicants speak exceptional English and others barely speak English at all. And we cannot make that distinction just by looking at your nationality, which is why we need um, some sort of proof of proficiency. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. And last but not least, and we can call it a day, there was a one a question, a funny question, but also very relevant question, actually. Uh, is it possible to survive without German uh, in your cities? So, uh, Professor Engel, you addressed this question, but ju just once I again. I said yes, say, yeah. No, I have yeah. a, a lot of, inter I mean, our program was not in English before, right? So I should be uh, clear on that. But I have a lot of international uh, people in my group, like a lot of international PhD students, and they all survived <laughs> for five <laughs> years at least they did <laughs> and by now they know a little bit of german too <laughs> yeah <laughs> great and <laughs> dr schmeller would you well, i would actually say it's it's all oh, the problem is the other way around uh, when you arrive there are so many germans and other students who want to take advantage of you being an international student to speak english to you all day long that you have to make a point to learn german when you're here it's going to be hard to find anyone to speak german to because they all want to speak english to you but you know it's your privilege to be in germany for two years and to pick up at least a little bit of the language i would say um yeah. it's going to be hard to do that because everyone's going to take advantage of your english so that should That's be a problem. Cool. That is completely true. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Don't feel too comfortable, guys. When someone speak in English with you, try to speak German. Even if it's not good yet, try to speak German. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you will not be able to upgrade your level. Okay, great. Uh, very good. Uh, we addressed the questions and thank you very much to our guests uh, for your wonderful presentations, first of all, and second for answering all these questions pretty comprehensively and concisely. Uh, thank you to our attendees, of course, for your questions, for your interest, for joining in today. And yeah, uh, I would like to also tell you that if you would like to uh, give us your feedback regarding today's webinar, and if you had any concerns or praise, we always take it into account for our future webinars and direct links to where you can give us feedback uh, on Facebook and Google are in the chat. And I think, yeah, 
uh, also, I said that if some of you have some uh, general questions also, I, there were what, two or three questions, general ones. If you need more clarification, you can also drop us an email. But if you have more questions regarding specific programs, of course, it's a good idea to get in touch with our guests because they are very generous to, say, to uh, share with you all the contact details. And uh, yeah, as you can see, they're very friendly and they're ready to help you with all the answers that they have. So that was all from my side. Um, once again, thanks a lot. And I wish you all a very nice evening or morning or afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. So yeah, all the best to you. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>